Dozens of Ukrainian villages have suffered from the actions of the Russian military. The invaders lived in some of them, located their bases, and, in addition to regular shelling, terrorized the local population. Sergei Yeremenko went to one of such villages, Andriivka in the Kyiv region. Our next story is about how the locals recover from enemy arbitrariness and the Mead as a way to undermine the occupier's discipline. In the village of Andriivka in the Kiev region, specialists are now calculating the damage caused by the occupiers. It is only at the entrance to the village that it becomes clear that the losses are considerable, because it is easier to count the houses that were spared than the broken ones. The occupiers fired even where the locals wrote, people live here. Almost all burnt Russian military equipment has been removed from the village. Roads have been cleared of debris and shells, and yards are still being demined. In those houses that were spared, the locals are tidying up. The occupiers lived in some of them. We've been clearing up the mess here for two weeks. Russian soldiers were based in Alexander's house for half a month, and before that they kicked out the owners into the street. It is more or less clean here now, but immediately after returning home, Alexander and his wife were horrified. Their cars were fired upon and chopped with an axe. The house was in disarray and stank. The yard was full of rubbish. There were mountains of rubbish. Everything that was stolen was brought here. Some of the things were identified and taken away by fellow villagers. Some of the things Alexander destroyed. Along with the rations of occupation, he burned what he and his wife had been buying and collecting for years. We burned the furniture they came in contact with. It is disgusting. The occupiers lived in a carpentry workshop of his neighbour Ivan, and there they installed their armoured personnel carrier. When they fled, they left a lot of their own and looted things. They ran so fast that they even forgot their documents. There was a list of personnel. Our soldiers took it away when, the next day, they looked at what was being done. This is a bottle of Admiral Vodka. A worthy continuation of the glorious traditions is written on the bottle. When their own supplies of vodka ran out, the occupiers continued to visit Ivan's mother, Alexandra, to continue the glorious traditions. Do you have vodka? We say no, there is no vodka. Instead, Grandma Shura, as Alexandra calls herself, had her own mead. Her son bought it from the cellar and Grandma Shura and her friend Nina poured it for the occupiers. We had to give it to them. We shared because who knows what they have in their mind. From the hops, the occupiers became kinder and reached out to Grandma Shura. She poured mead for them and began political and educational work. I said to them, oh children, what are you doing? Why did you come here? They replied that they had been told to capture Kyiv in two days. Apparently they were also not happy to come here, but they came for something. I said that our nations used to be friends. Grandma, we're not shooting, they answered. I begged them not to kill me, because it's a big sin. Now Grand Mashura in the village is known as the one who made the enemy platoon drunk. She doesn't consider herself a heroine. She says that in her 70s she used everything she could to fight the invaders. Quick wit and little knowledge of moonshine traditions. Maybe that mead saved us. Sergei Yeremenko, Dmitry Matvienko, Vika Program, ICTV, United News.